start recording. Let's record me brushing my hair. Woohoo! Absolutely. So it's like, hey, maybe they put the label on the coffee bag, right? Hmm? Brown coffee bag, red fucking print. <laughs> uh, Macquarie's. Yeah. Which I've yeah, I've before. I have had. I took a photo. Good <laughs> enough. The magnification app that I used to use changed, and it's shitty now. Aww. So we now I have. About it. Um, you used to be able to, uh, to do it wouldn't it would autofocus, which was fine. I wanted it to autofocus on words, kind of the point, or what it was looking at. But you used to be able to pinch out to zoom or like pinch out to zoom in, mm -hmm. and you could zoom in a great deal, like up to about twenty times magnification. Okay. They now only let you go up to six times magnification. You have to push the button on the side. But if you miss by a small amount and push the button just above it, it changes your lighting. That's annoying. And they're both tiny buttons. Well, that seems like poor design choices. Yeah. So I'm trying another one, which has you hold the camera sideways, which is totally fine. Like, I can see the buttons. That's how big they are. Cool. But same idea. They only let you magnify so far in. And they don't really do well if you have any motion at all. Mm. Like, you have to be as stable as the object you're taking a magnification of. And I'm like, nobody's arm's that steady. My arm's not even that steady. And I'm not known for shaking or fast movement of any kind. Yeah. So, what? Magnification apps. Oh, rage. I did post a Twitter photo of how I grocery shop though. Cane in the cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? It's terribly off. You've seen me grocery shop. Cane goes yeah. in the cart. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, here's a slice of life for you. Don't freak out when you see this. It's normal. <laughs> cart functions uh, as a perfectly good cane. Run into stuff. Stu yeah. My mom uses it to bounce up things all the time. <laughs> what? I don't think anyone is going to notice is that's two liters of pineapple juice in that cart. I did not notice that, no. And I'm almost done. Oh, wow. It's <laughs> a lot of pineapple juice. It's the Black River pineapple juice. Oh, my God. It is so good. I will so take your good. word for it. Pineapple is oh. not an especially appealing flavor to me. It's okay. Totally fair. Totally fair. Hey, my hair stuff smells like coconut. Oh, so you just got all the tropical stuff going on. Once, I, once I'm home. Uh, well, I need a detangler, right? Because my hair is so bloody fine, it tangles all the time. Well, you see it. Yeah. I brush it all the time, and it's always naughty. So we're hoping this might help. But between this and my, des my, my preferred summer sunscreen, I am going to smell like a tanning salon. <laughs> is this a bad thing? I am so excited. I'm going to <laughs> smell like a tropical dessert. I'm going to offend so many people. Don't care. Don't <laughs> care. I'm going to smell amazing. Excellent. Uh, all right. Shall we? Let's. All right. So, welcome to the Northerners Podcast. We are two sisters in fiber coming to you from two separate locations on our last recording before Diana goes on her honeymoon. Woo! Going on a trip. Going on a trip. Going on a trip. Now, if I'm exceptionally blind, it's because I put you guys in front of a window, and it's beautiful lighting. I can't see the screen, and it's just outside my arm's reach. Dawson's guessing today. <laughs> it's also early Sunday morning, so I'm caffeinating. And the only mug I'm allowed to drink coffee out of, because how I should never put coffee in mother's tea mug, I might flavor it. Insert eye roll here. <laughs> Tea drinkers are very particular. I'm only particular but it with doesn't... that. If your if the coffee that you've drank out of a ceramic mug flavors the tea you have after you've properly washed and rinsed that mug, there's cracks in your ceramic. Get rid of it. It also means there's germs in there mm. that you can't clean out. Otherwise, ceramic is a seal, and I would have to leave this cup of coffee in this mug way longer than it would ever so like when it came out it was solid yuck mm. yuck 
think about the kilning and firing process, which nobody probably knows anything about, but I used to do pottery, and I used to fire things in a kiln. It's sealed, guys. <laughs> it's not yeah. going anywhere. And I find it only makes a difference in travel mugs. If they're, like, metal yeah. or plastic, that yeah. retains because, flavor. But ceramic yeah. well, mugs, properly washed, yeah. don't. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, ceramic and glass don't retain flavor. It's the only types of uh, reusable cups I can have for water. I can't use the metal or the plastic. It, I start to taste the flavor change in the water after a while. It, absolutely, it takes on the flavor of what you put in it. But not yep. a ceramic and not a glass. I'm just like, yes, mother. I'll <laughs> use your Coke mug. But I mean, coffee out of a Coke mug. I'm fine with it. It's some really good stuff, too. Oh, uh, Diana, my dear, do you want to tell everybody what we're going to try to cover this week? Yeah, we're going to cover what's in our cup, cool threads, woolly workings... Fiber flubs, yarn on the go, wool gathering, knit literature, and events. Now that I'm done ranting about my coffee. Yep. So what kind of coffee is it? Yeah, I actually went to... Oh, man, we just did this. Macquarie's? Macquarie's. Listen, guys. I wrote it down. Guys. Guys, Diana wrote it down. I actually went and pulled the bag of pre-ground coffee out of the freezer, because that's where I store my coffee. The guy ground it wrong. Rage! <laughs> What's wrong with it? He did it for a filter. I asked for a French press. Oh, so it's just a little too fine? I always have grinds in my coffee. Aww. Super disappointing. It's a coffee place. They should know better. And it, and it does make a difference because your French press filter isn't as finely woven as a regular drip filter is. Yeah. So the grind has to be different. I'm like, I paid good money. This is Highland Grog coffee, by the way. It's really freaking good coffee. But it's a nice brown paper bag, which is very unassuming. And then they put a red font on it. Okay. Sure. Does not pass Fine. the uh, eyeball test. Does not pass the eyeball test, you guys. I had to take a photo and then ask Diana to read it to me. I remember what type of coffee it is. I think I'm going to go back and pick up some beans and not have them ground. And I'll just grind them when I get home. Because I didn't bring my grinder. I just brought my French press. Mm. So it's, it's a coffee place. It sells coffee and loose teas in giant jars where they weigh it out. Super old school general store like. You would love the place. Mm. It does sound so pretty cool. great. It's so cool. And I'm like, how can you not do it properly? This is all the coffee ranting this morning. It's early Sunday morning, you guys. Uh, we're recording early Sunday morning because Diana's not going to be in the country for Mother's Day, which is next weekend. Uh, and my dad's in town and free today, so we have to go to the Berry Barn. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very important stuff. Uh-huh. It, it is. How else am I going to get my summer salad dressing? Critical. It's absolutely critical. I buy it from the Berry Barn. <laughs> Well, I have very uninteresting stuff in my cup. I just have a glass of orange juice because I've only just been awake long enough that I think it would be okay for me to have caffeine. So I try not to have caffeine within about an hour of waking up so that I actually just wake up naturally. And then I can add caffeine on top of that because I don't want to be dependent on caffeine to wake up. Well, and not even so much that, but doesn't the science show that if you drink coffee before you've been awake for about an hour, you don't absorb it? Something like that, yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. It was I've less effective in the first hour anyway. Hour. Yeah. So, I've only just now been awake long enough to have coffee, so I'm drinking orange juice. I got up I'll have coffee after. 6.30 Saskatoon time, so 7.30 Manitoba time. So now that it we're after 10 a.m. at a Saskatoon time, I've been out for a while. <laughs> fair, fair. Coffee's fine. I've also had cereal, my shower, gotten dressed, done my yoga, and did some knitting. I haven't been awake that long. <laughs> That's fine. That's alright. I'm wearing my new spring cardigan. Ooh. Ooh. It's a nice day uh, for a light sweater. A nice oh day no. for a... For a cardigan! <laughs> we are nerds. Oh my <laughs> god. Okay, guys. I posted on the uh, Winnipeg Stitch and Bitch group that we're both members of. Uh, I'd seen this meme floating around and it's Billy Idol? Yeah, it's Billy Idol. And he sings the song, It's a Nice Day for a White Wedding. Only the ladies had taken his pose, which was his dramatic face pose with arm raised, and it had said, it's a nice day for a cardigan, and they like, ex <laughs> capitals of the cardigan, and extended it out. I couldn't help myself. I had to share it. It's Just, fantastic. Oh, it's so good. I love so that meme. Good. Oh, it's so good. 
exciting. All right. Have you been wearing anything this week? It's been kind of cool up here in Saskatoon. They rarely hit double digits, so I've been lightweight sweaters and my um, exploration station a lot. Uh, I have also pretty much just been wearing my exploration station. Mm -hmm. Don't I... get me wrong, I'm going to be wearing it today because with this blue flower white print combo thing I got going on, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's going to look amazing. Yeah, the weather's been like wet, but not overly cold. Oh man, Saskatoon needs more rain. We got a little bit of rain, but they have wildfires already going on all oh. over the place in this province. Like, it's already bad. Oh and yeah, I know like, it like you rained got... a couple days ago here. They need rain. They need more rain. We got some. They need more. It's still quite dry out here. So, mm. Dad's probably glad it's not raining right now. He's putting <laughs> up the gazebo in the backyard. Mom's uh, like, oh, is that the banging from earlier? No, that was Aunt Jerry doing something. Not sure what. Oh, okay. <laughs> Throwing things. Ash probably ran into something. It happens all the time. You know, you've seen me. And Aunt Jerry has less vision than I do. You can just imagine I, how many I stuff... run into things all the time, and I can see them just fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true. just a thing that happens. <laughs> That's true. I just have an excuse. <laughs> I have no excuse. I just run into things. <laughs> I, can, I go, oh, didn't see that. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So I'm glad we're both wearing our exploration stations as much as we are. Because on July the 1st, we're casting on more Stephen West, I believe. In fact. In fact. I might I'm last so minute change up what pattern I'm making. Well, I've decided I've got, I've got, okay, so guys, last year, if you're a brand new listener, hi, welcome. Technically, we're a knitting podcast. We do eventually get there. Um. Last year we did an Across the Prairies cowl with, um, oh, see if I can do this, Feathered Stitches, A Tale of Two Knitters, and Cozy Up Knit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, Feathered Stitches and Cozy Up Knits are in Alberta, and uh, us and A Tale of Two Knitters are in Manitoba, so we called it the Across the Prairies cowl, because it went across the prairie. Now, thankfully, last year we all kind of wanted to do the same shawl, which was the Exploration Station by Stephen West. So we did that one specific shawl. We all of us ran a knit along, so you could enter four times across four different platforms uh, in the Ravelry groups. This year we sort of opened it up because we couldn't quite agree on one shawl, so we went, let's just do it as a Stephen West shawl knit along. You could choose whatever shawl you wanted. Great, you're thinking, right? Jocelyn has like 14 Stephen West shawls saved in mm -hmm. her favorites bundles that she wants to make. That doesn't help me at all. That's too many choices. I need limiters. <laughs> this is not going to work for Jocelyn. Diana has an easier time of it because she's she knows what she likes. She knows what she wears. And Diana has an easier time than I do trying to narrow down what I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. I had a shawl all planned out that I was going to make last year and it didn't happen. So yeah. Now the maybe it'll shawl. happen this year. Yeah. With the iris being the colorway Diana. I know. Yarns. It'd be so cool. Yeah. And I mean, you'll make it at some point, whether you make it this year or not. But what I figure I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till you come home from your honeymoon because I know birthday yarn's coming home with me from Amsterdam. Mm hmm. So why don't I wait to see what you bring me and then I'll build a shawl around that. Fair enough. How is that for thinking? Because then I can be like, you know what? This color works really well in this kind of a pattern. That'll help me narrow my choices down. So I should be making a decision soon ish. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, what? You, you keep telling yourself that. Uh, I'm going to the Midnight Cravings grand opening next Saturday. Ooh, I'm so excited. They have four new colorways they're releasing the day of their grand opening. Ooh, nice. How jealous are you? A little bit. A little bit. I gotta go buy your birthday yarn. <laughs> and, I, well, yeah, I've already got your non birthday present, so. Non yarn birthday present. I'll get you your own birthday present. I might actually tell you what it is, just because I, I don't think I can hang on to that secret for a few more weeks. <laughs> hmm. I like people knowing what I'm giving, because I like knowing what I'm giving, because I'm not... If it's not useful for you, then what's the point? Hmm. Fair Does that make sense? Like, I don't want to gift clutter to other people. I like taking it out of my life. I assume everybody else also appreciates not having a ton of clutter in their life. I do appreciate that. But yarn wise, 
your stash is like a third of mine, so I don't feel as though it's at a clutter <laughs> stage yet. So you're good no, to go. No, my yarn is well. I haven't put all of it away right now, so there's there's some clutter over there just off screen. So just <sighs> anyway, um, I totally lost that train of thought that I was. We'd been talking about cool threads and what we were drinking still. Okay. And I severely derailed us, yep. like I do. Well, yeah. uh, let's pick a new track and uh, talk about some woolly workings. Sure. It's the Jocelyn Show. It is the Jocelyn Show. I have worked on precisely one thing. Uh, <laughs> so... Right. Right. In my defense, it has been an extremely busy week, both at work, because we're working on a deadline for our biggest contract ever. Oh, my. Uh, so that's been crazy. But That would be crazy. Also, going on a trip next week, so when I'm not at work, I've been running around doing errands for that, so... Well, you saw me the week before I left to come here. The week before vacation is insane for everybody. There's just so much to do. So much to do. That is my excuse for not having much knitting. Wait till she comes back from Europe and her excuse is she was in Europe. You guys, I'm sensing a trend. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) You know what? Lots of walking. Actually, no, there's going to be lots of train time. So that's. Oh, hey. Take a good, take a good roundy roundy project. I dropped something on the floor. I don't know what it was. I'll go look at it later. It's fine. You guys, I went and got my teeth fixed this week. Excellent. Um super excellent i had uh for the first time in over a decade a good dental experience Ooh. which is hard for me to come by uh and now the full week of the outpouring of shared i don't actually have a problem with dentists i don't have a problem with getting my teeth worked on i understand it's just for me it's like it's just one more thing you do you get your teeth checked you get problems repaired and i just consider it a part of adult life the problem has come as i've had my vision reduced when you lie down in the dentist chair, people have peripheral vision, so you can sort of catch the glimpses of the dentist coming in and out of your peripheral vision. Mm-hmm. And I'll do a demonstration so like all the audio listeners can see what I'm doing. <laughs> if I hold my hands up on the side of my head, I don't see them. I know they're there because I can feel myself moving my hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, okay. But if I have to narrow my field of focus, my hands do not come into focus for me till they're well within the frame of my glasses on my face. I can now see my hands. That's not a wide range of vision. No, no, that is not. Diana loves to hang out in this I don't see I, zone. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mother hangs out in the I don't see zone, and then I walk into her and she looks at me and I'm like, hello. <laughs> I have the same disease you do. What are you doing? We like to uh, silently sneak up in, uh, oh! in blind zones. Uh... Everybody, everybody does. The only person I hear coming is Willow. That's because her tail <laughs> is so loud. <laughs> My cat, everybody does it. It's fine. Everybody, everybody loves to do that to me. And I'm just like, I'm so I'm used to it. But when you're lying down in the dentist chair and the only thing you see is the light in the center, how much would it freak you out if all of a sudden somebody was touching your face and you didn't know they were there? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I stop and I explain every freaking time, every freaking dentist, I go in, okay. I know you got to do work. It's not super fun on my end. It's not super fun on my end. It's cool. I'm not going to understand a ton of the terminology. I haven't gone to school for dentistry. I don't know what an A1 or an A3 means. I understand it's mine on my first front teeth, but that's all I've got. But before you just go for my face, can you tell me you're there? Because I have no peripheral vision, so I don't know you're there. And to me, a dentist office is as loud as a concert. Mm. Because I can hear the drill two rooms over as though it's in my room that is that is where my hearing sits right now so you can imagine how loud that drill is when it's in the room with me (laughs) so it's a loud sensory issue nobody's listened i've gone to all female dentist office in the city nobody's listened the one out here in saskatoon listened so they talked to me as we approached when they were doing the work. The because uh, you always get the dentist and you got the, the um, I don't know what their official title is, but they're their helper. Oh, the hygi- dental gen- assistant. Gen- hygienist? hygienist. They've got a really nice name, and I'm I'm completely blanking, which is totally my fault. 
but she every time she was in because they get up and leave because they have to fetch stuff right Mm -hmm. every time she came back she made sure that her leg was touching my arm on the side of the chair so i knew where she was so i just didn't have hands coming out of nowhere grabbing my face (laughs) And it's a sm- it's such a small thing. I think it's it's a tiny thing. It makes a world of difference. I walked out and I told my mom I'd go back, and I haven't walked out of a dentist office willing to go back to the same dentist in almost a decade. Wow. Yeah, and I mean I've had orthodontics, I've had braces, I've had teeth pulled, I've had I have had the dental surgery to have wisdom teeth removed. Like I've done some serious dental work, and I've got more to do. It's just the nature of my face. That's fine. I don't mind. I know it has to be done, but my mom's like, yeah, if you like him. And I can get on the plan I'm hoping to get on next year when I come back. That'll just be what I do every year when I'm out here. And we'll just go back to him. It's definitely I hard have to, to find a good oh, dentist. Yes, it is. Well, I had one in Winnipeg for a short time. See, the thing on the floor is bugging me. Uh, I had a thing on in Winnipeg for a short time. But he had the right to retire, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't retire. How <laughs> dare he? Age. Wait, you can retire retire it's totally fine anyway the long story of the story was because i was working on my socks so uh to keep the anxiety at bay and the oh my god someone's playing on the inside of my mouth panic which i think we all do i don't think any of us like having people in our mouths no generally not no it's not a not a comfortable thought for most of us so i worked on my socks super cool right didn't even blink when i was like man on my socks like yeah absolutely grab them so I did some more work on my two at a time toe up boo socks, which I'm making out of the Sea Turtle Fiber Arts boo colorway, which is a self striping uh, white base with orange. Uh, what I keep saying, candy cane orange, candy cane orange, which is candy, candy corn orange. <laughs> I don't know why I want to say cane all the time, but I really do. A candy corn orange, a nice black, and the Walmart costume purple. <laughs> I am so close to my heel, it's not even funny. I literally have to finish, because you see it goes black, and then it's got an orange, little black, white. It does a little black, and it does the orange strip again. Mm -hmm. I literally need to get to the other side of this white orange strip up here, and I'm at the heel. Nice. So I really need to to just get it there, put my, um, because I'm going to put my heel on to DPNs. And, uh, yeah, because I'm going to DPN my heels. Okay. Or waste yarn my heel and make a heel hole. As though I had cut it, like, as though I'm pretending I'm going to cut my yarn later. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to put the stitches on a deep, or on waste yarn so I can keep knitting in the round. And then that way my stitches are already on waste yarn to pick up. And I can do an afterthought heel. Which theoretically should save me the step of going, hey, Diana, can you cut my yarn? <laughs> Which I know is a thing that I would do. So it's, it's a not, not a quite afterthought heel. Not quite afterthought heel. A pre-thought afterthought heel. Maybe. A planned afterthought heel. Sure. <laughs> it lives in my Aaron Lane bag, which I take with me when I travel and do things. So it's close enough to the heel that it's gonna have to stay here till I can get the heel put in, and then I can hopefully have it prepped to go see uh, Avengers Endgame this week with Mum. Nice. It's been out long enough. We should be able to have a, a low volume matinee experience because I hate the smell of popcorn. Allergic to corn, so that makes sense for me. Mm-hmm. And mom hates people. So. <laughs> what a combination. Hey, listen. A movie theater is exceptionally clean, quiet, and not smelly during a matinee performance. All right. Don't know and that it I've ever smell- gone to a matinee performance. You and I shall start doing so. Because I think you would quite enjoy the experience. It's a little disconcerting to come out of the movie theater and have it be daylight outside, but once you get over that gap, you're fine. (laughs) Well, if you think about it, even people who like popcorn say sometimes the movie theater popcorn smell is a little intense. I love popcorn smell, but I also love salt an unhealthy amount, so I might be biased. It's totally fine. Uh, but I find during a matinee performance, they've just started up the popcorn machine, so it doesn't smell quite so strongly, which is great for me because I find the smell of popcorn quite nauseating. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I associate popcorn with bad things, not good things. Yeah. Yeah. So it works for me. I also find 
uh, during matinee performances, it's easier for me to get the described audio. <laughs> There's not so much going on. So making the request is a little easier to, to accommodate. And I'm not being quite such a, oh, you're super busy with huge long lines, but I need extra help. <laughs> I can wait a couple of days and go later. Fair enough. Jocelyn's excitement level just goes up because I'm already half done my coffee. Oh, I'm still talking, aren't I? Yeah, I've uh, I've got one thing. So. Uh... All right. Um, in a very brief glance, I have my sweater cow, which is the my first sweater knit along by Marley Bird, and Red Heart Yarns. Uh, I am doing mine out of the Faucet Stones colorway from Lion Brand, and I'll talk about it more later. But here are the two balls that used to be sleeves. Oh no. We'll discuss it later. Oh no. Next. You guys, sometimes my life is just just a pain in the keister. All right, who wants to see a new shawl? Me, me. Who wants to see a new Jocelyn shawl design? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. We picked, we made the name last night because I talked to Mr. B because I can't name anything worth a darn. I can't. I can't. I believe my first text was who do I have to sell my soul to so that I can think of names for stuff. Naming stuff is hard. It's <laughs> so hard. So he talked me through it. And we, we found a couple suggestions, and I sent them off to my primary, hey, does this sound good person? Which is red. Uh, and she came back with one. So here is the start of the Northern Radiance shawl. Ooh, I like it. It is a easy all-over pattern. It's not cabled. I've changed the lace a little bit, but I'm not going to surgery fix the top piece till I come home. Because then I can work under my magnifying, under my bright lights, and all the nonsense I have set up for myself, right? So I am current. I have sent the the pattern as it currently exists to Red because she really, really, really wanted it. Guys, I'm not. I'm not done. The first shawl. <laughs> now I have to boogie really fast because she's a quick knitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I am currently making my way through that. I'm hoping to have it done so that I can show it off to the ladies at Midnight Cravings because of the two colors I'm using. This beautiful rich brown is the French press colorway for Midnight Cravings, which is wonderful, wonderful, deep. Just, uh, do you know what it reminds me of? Mm. Other than coffee, because all browns remind me of coffee in some format. The look of earth and gardens, Ooh. just after you've planted and the green stuff's just coming up. Oh, okay. That really nice, pretty, rich soil color. And coffee. <laughs> and Brown. coffee. And coffee. So I'm uh, doing that. And I figured it out. This is definitely Pima Cotton. Okay. So this is definitely from Crate Garden Crafts. And I think it's the confetti colorway. I could be wrong on the colorway name. You don't even... Apparently we need to talk to the outside. You don't even want to know how... Um, whatchamacallit it. You guys, background noise brought to you by my great aunt Geraldine. She's 78 and does what she wants. Uh, and when you're 78, you've earned the right. <laughs> you really have. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I'm not sure. It's either confetti or hibiscus flowers. I'm not positive. I think it's confetti. I don't think it's hibiscus flowers. So. I think it would have I, to be confetti with the blues in there. I think so. Like, that's why I'm like, okay, I'm heavily leaning towards that. I could be wrong. But I'm thoroughly enjoying it because, oh, you felt the Pima cotton from Creek Garden Crafts. It oh, is I have some. A gorgeous cotton. I am so happy to be working on it. So I am, by slowly, I mean, this thing has to be done. And if you guys follow us on Instagram, you'll see it. If you don't, we're the Northern Knits podcast on Instagram. Uh, I will have it finished and bound off. It might not be blocked because I have no blocking wires or mats. Meh. So we'll see what I can do in that department. Uh, but I'll take it with me to hopefully the grand opening for Midnight Craving on Saturday. Excellent. Which means I literally have till May the 11th at noon to have it bound off. Because dad's at a thing in the morning. <laughs> and we're not leaving till 1. <laughs> like, no time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Which brings me down to one item. Would you like to talk about yours? Sure. I conveniently just now finished the row that I was working on. How's that for timing? Beautiful. <clears throat> Let me just stretch this out so it looks a little better. Sure. Okay. I am working on the Not a Lot of Rain in April Shawl by Cozy Up Knits. 
a nice, a I nice have this knit. gorgeous skein of yarn that just wanted to be a one skein shawl, a 300 gram one skein worsted weight shawl, and this seemed like a good pattern for it. I think it's turning out amazing. So and it's I, a wonderful pattern. Yeah, so it's the yarn is Cedars and Spruce is the colorway from Cloud9 Fiberworks. Oh, you got to see Daria on Saturday. Her I display did. looked great. Yes, I took pretty pictures. <laughs> oh, I, you are really good at taking photos. Uh, my camera's really good at taking photos. My phone is amazing. Anyway, it is uh, coppery reds and browns into coppery blues and greens. So it's like new copper and oxidized copper mm -hmm. in a ball. And I'm making yeah. a shawl out of it. And it just plays together so nicely in the garter and so nicely in the lace. And I love everything about this. Oh, 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 oh. it's so nice. Uh, you can see I made like six rows of progress with my little sheepy stitch marker here, or progress keeper. That's fine. That's fine. And I think I probably mentioned this last week, but I had to replace my clacky little plate stitch markers because they were yeah, just... Yeah, you said they were driving you nuts. <laughs> they were really just... They were too big to be that close together. If they were on opposite mm. ends of the shawl, it would have been fine, but to have them close together. So I just have these simple little metal yeah. rings now that uh, Jackie got me, I think, for Oh, like the little birthday, silver Christmas. teardrops? Uh, no, they're just uh, the little... Oh, you got the teardrops. I got just circles. I got the teardrops. Yeah. yeah, she got me nice little teardrops that work really well on a lot of the, the thinner weight stuff that I do, which is really, really nice. Yeah, so nice I, just have these, I just have these little rings. So super simple, and I have a ton of them, and I like them. And they, Excellent. <laughs> I also really enjoy how this stupid little sheep does not go with this project at all. It makes me really happy. <laughs> you know what? Makes you happy. That's the point. Yep. Done and done. Oh, I'm so excited to see some progress on that, because I think you're really going to enjoy that shawl. I love mine. Love mine. I'm going to make another one, but I think I'm, I'm going to yeah, hit I'm up. Really, um, I'm really going to like this, I think. And this, I I love just, it feels nice. The lace even has a texture oh, yeah. to it because it's I got know. the center double decreases, oh. and it so it just oh, I just want to like. Ah. I want you got the like pattern. Weird. <laughs> I want you got the pattern in your head. It's not that hard. It really isn't. I no, don't know why I was the... having so much trouble with it before. It's fine. Listen, <laughs> we also can't do two by two ribbing without screwing it up every row. So it's, you know what? It's a thing. <laughs> and. <laughs> I, you and I will tell people ribbing is easy because it, it is. is, but we still can't do two by two ribbing to save our souls. So it, it's fine. <laughs> I, I totally get it. Super complicated 16 row cable. No problem. You want me to stock a net stitch? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Pretty much. I, My brain's uh, not designed for that. I definitely, because uh, in the lace, so the garter stitch is obviously knit both rows, whether you're on the front or the back side. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a short fiber flub here. Um, but in the lace side, it's uh, you knit on the right side and you purl on the wrong side. But I forgot that when I started this lace section. <laughs> so I was like, I was trying to knit back on the right side. I'm like, this doesn't look right. Oh. Poo. So I had Oops. to unknit that row. Oops, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I did the same for the lace in my own pattern. Guys, I wrote the pattern and I still messed it up. Uh, I'm not going to fix it till I come home because then I want to see if I can get uh, you or Red to maybe throw in a lifeline for me. And okay. I'm just going to cut that strip out. And then I'll pick up on one side and knit the lace and connect it to the other. Right. I know how. It's not complicated. I just need help with the dark brown stitches and picking them up to make sure I get all of them. Makes sense make sense hey oh i'm so glad you're doing the not a lot of rain in april shawl with that colorway it's so good yeah i was showing it so off good. uh i was showing it off to daria of cloud nine Fiberworks yesterday and Excellent. she came and found me later and she's like can i borrow your shawl again somebody's asking about what how the heavier weight yarns knit up <laughs> I'm like yeah sure so my uh, my in progress shawl was a showpiece for a little bit yesterday yeah why not hey listen Manitoba Fiber Festival. I want to do another one of those in Daria's stuff, but I want to make it three skeins so I can make it Jocelyn sized. Mm. So we got to hit up Daria's um, booth for the Fiber Festival, and I need to pick up three worsted and one of her variegated because she just does such good colorways. Oh, I love her variegated yarns so very much. Don't get me wrong, I love a lot of stuff, guys. It's not hard for me to love stuff. You make things in yarn, I probably love it. Fair assessment. 
Oh, and it's in a color. Even better. Even better. It's in a color. Super stoked. All right. I only have one more thing to talk about. All right. And that is the piece I am making for our spring garment craft along, which we are doing as a craft along from the spring equinox this past 20th of uh, April. March. Yes. April. April. March. 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 You are correct. Uh, 20th of March through the summer solstice, which is the 21st of June. That sounds right. Aha! Spring equinox to summer solstice, I can remember. The dates? Uh, a little a little sketch. <laughs> the dates are in the show notes. <laughs> For the a reason. Dates. It's the, it's the 20 reason. something to the 20 something. 20 something. Else. Yeah. <laughs> dates are not my strong suit, guys. <laughs> uh, I am working on the cotton shrug again which is a pattern recently released from cozy up knits guys can you tell i like them as designers mm-hmm. oh that looks so cool be... i know i've split for my sleeves there's a hole for my head <laughs> hole for my head um i'm not sure if youtube will pick that up as the clip but if it does use that one that that looks great me sticking my head through <laughs> So I have split from my sleeves and combined, but you can see from this wonderful ice cream stitch marker up through here, that's how much I've worked on. Nice. It's not an insignificant amount. That's like, what, eight inches? I am crap at estimating distances. It's more than six inches, but less than 10. So sort of dividing it down the middle and saying eight. So I'm on to my back shaping, which shouldn't take too terribly long to do. And then uh, they recommend doing the sleeves next, because if you do the sleeves, then do your ribbing. And it's got a massive, like a six inch wide, one by one rib shawl collar all the way around. Okay. Holy Hannah, I hate ribbing, so this is going to take a while. If I'm smart, I have it set up so I can work on the ribbing while I'm in the truck on the way home. Because mm-hmm. then it's back and forth for eight hours. That'll help me get a bunch of it done. Uh, I'm doing mine in some cotton uh, premier, premier cotton, which is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. And I'm doing it in the silver colorway, which is this beautiful light gray, silvery color, which will look great with all of my summer dresses. So I am super excited by that. My mom felt it. She likes it too. So I might end up making one for her. As long as the one you're currently making actually comes home with you. <sighs> Do I not finish it till I come home? <laughs> <laughs> smart you guys listen there's a ricky bag in the background that's where i put the yarn that i got from my mom's uh crochet garment that i'm gonna make her mm-hmm. i'm hoping to have that done by the time mom and dad come back to saskatoon because they're staying in winnipeg for a week it's my hope if not i'll have it done by the time their granddaughter goes out to visit them in august so my mom can have it in august so nice it out great because that's her birthday month excellent and then what I did this week in typical Jocelyn fashion because I love I love me a Jocelyn fashion thing mm-hmm. did you know Barocco Yarns is doing a knit along I did not, I do now did you know that they're they're doing a knit along called the Marsh and Mallow because can you, can, you, can you say no to a good pun I can't I okay. can't the Marsh is the pullover the Mallow is the cardigan look at this cardigan oh that's so pretty it is amazing lace detailed back on a cardigan and it's just a nice simple open front cardigan that's so pretty just so pretty and they did it in a barocco modern cotton i i mean the local yarn store in winnipeg has the has the modern cotton but i'm not in winnipeg right now and i want to start this right now Mm-hmm. Guys, I'm so mad at my current cow sweater because I was supposed to be at seaming at this point and I'm not. I have to redo my sleeves. So I'm uh, going this week to Prairie Lily. I'm coming back. Woo-hoo. And I'm going to pick up some ultra modern, like the ultra wool DK in the Barocco. I love Barocco yarns. I have their arrow at home. I've put huttering through a cardigan on that for them. It's just. I made a double layered hat out of, I think, the comfort at one point. <laughs> So I think so, yeah. yeah, to work yeah. With. Oh yeah, the Baroque is, and it's got gorgeous stitch definition, so I'm going to go pick up, don't know what color yet, I'm going to see what color she has, the amount of skeins that I need, and then I'll pick from there, right? 
Because again, I wear all the colors except for black, so no biggie, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna make this. I have till June, and I'm gonna participate in the little long. So super stoked about that. So those pictures should start coming in shortly. Daddy printed the pattern for me, so I could have it in color. Nice. Because I have a nice daddy. He's also going to have to take me to the knitting store. So again, he's already been there once. <laughs> we have footage. <laughs> oh, I'm very blessed with really nice parents. <laughs> oh, but that's it for my woolly workings. All right. You want to tell us about your uh, sleeve situation? No. <laughs> Because it upsets me. Aww. This this was supposed to be free and clear. These are my six millimeter forty inch cord. Uh-huh. Don't ask me why I function on millimeters on this, but inches on the cord. I blame it on the fact that I'm a carpenter's daughter. Sure. <laughs> Have you noticed that I do half my measurements imperial and half of them in metric? Honestly, I hadn't because I feel like that's almost just a Canadian thing. I think it might be, but I I like to go like I should just be fully metric because I am in a metric country. You would think, but I also measure my height in feet and inches. And I don't understand measurements in centimeters. Like, I can't visualize it in my head. I know, right? I have no idea how tall I am in meters. But I'm 5'6". Uh, I, I know how tall I am in meters, and I know how tall I am in feet and inches, but I don't... Like, I can't visually grasp it in my head in, in meters. Yeah. But if you tell me your height in feet and inches, I totally have an estimation of how tall you are. Right. 5'6", yeah. you're really that short? Yeah. <gasps> God, I spend a lot of my time sitting around you, don't I? You're not I that much like taller four, than me. I have like four inches on you. I have four inches on you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but five foot six is what my driver's license says. Whether that's actually totally accurate, I have no idea. It's what I told them, and that's what they put on the license. So that's what it says. As according to my yearly physical, I am a quarter inch shy, five foot eleven. So I'm five ten, because at five foot eleven, you're pretty much six feet tall. Anyway, yes, sleeve saga. Sleeve saga. Cause I just, oh, this was supposed to be clear. This cord was supposed to be empty because I was supposed to have two finished sleeves so I could seam my thing. I went and bought bias tape and I bought the stuff I needed to sew the bias tape onto my thing. But do I have finished sleeves? Oh no, no I don't. I have two balls of yarn. I have a finished front. Okay. I have a finished back. Okay. <laughs> I got, look, look, I, oh, and they're drop shoulders. I only have to knit like 13 inches for a sleeve. Let's be honest, 17 inches, because I got long arms. Knit the sleeves. Took an hour and a half to match the balls up so that the stripes would be the same on the sleeves. Not as worried about it on front or back, because that's not that big of a deal to me. But uh, the sleeves, I wanted to be matching, because you're more likely to have your sleeves up close to each other. Okay. When you're like crossing your arms and doing stuff, then you are to have the front of you and the back of you <laughs> at the same time. That would be some interesting phase shifting. What? Like that's a physics I don't get. <laughs> okay. What I forgot in the whole thing, a super well wrote out sleeve pattern. Uh, Marley Board wrote it out because it's a pattern she made. Then she charted the sleeves for people. Guys, Ooh. she charted your sleeve increases for you. So that you wouldn't have to worry whether you have to knit four four rows and then your increase. Or is it uh, on the fourth row you do your increase? She did all that work for you, which is amazing when you first start as a knitter. Because sleeves are terribly tricky. If you don't understand how increasing or decreasing is supposed to work for them, they look like Greek. Hmm. I have well, yet to imagine? knit a sleeve, so. Well, yeah. But, I mean, the first time you do it, you're going to sit there and go, what now? Once you get it, it's like the light bulb for everything else in the planet. You're like, oh my god, this is easy, whatever. I like my sleeves quite tight. Especially in a more boxy-shaped sweater, right? Mm-hmm. Totally forgot and just knit the sleeves up as was and didn't try them on. Way too loose. Oh, no. Way too loose. Because, well, I might be a 52 in the bust. Which is, for the record, a... 2 to 4 XL depending on the size of everything else I am a large medium everywhere else <laughs> that's a fairly significant size differential yep oh I understand what? so I forgot and I just cast it on for the size sweater I'm making not realizing that I needed to cast on two sizes smaller in the sleeve I knew I knew I had to do the extra ribbing because I like to have a longer sleeve mm-hmm 
and I knew it would make sense for me to sew my grow grain ribbon and attach and sew my and, and mattress stitch my shoulders together so I could put it on and have it a very accurate measure down my arm so I would get the right length. Yeah. So I figured whatever, I'd go for sure up to my elbow, then stop the sleeves for a moment, just mattress stitch or uh, mattress stitch my or crochet stitch them closed and do my grow grain ribbon to where I want my neck opening to be because it's like maybe like 12 in or it's a fairly wide boat neck. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's fine. Cool, right? No problem. Except the sleeves were like that wide. They were like a hand and a half wide. Oh my gosh. That's, not, that's a big not sleeve. For my, that's not, not for my frame. Not on, a, not on a boxy sweater. I need the slimmer sleeves. So that wasn't going to work. I, didn't, I, just, I just did not like it. So I had to rip out two because I didn't check the first time. Oh. So... Wow, cool, my fault, my bad, I know better. I'm going to do them two at a time in the round. I just, I, I just want them done. <laughs> You're so close no... to having a sweater. I'm like, oh, my, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not messing around with this. This is serious. <laughs> I'm casting on two at a time, and I'm giving her on a tight sleeve. Because <sighs> at a six millimeter on a worsted weight yarn, guys, it's not like it's going to take me long to mm-hmm. knit 13 inches. I'm like... 27 stitches or something crazy small oh yeah that'll just go whoosh whoosh i'll be done so i'm uh, hoping to have all of that finished by wednesday or thursday this week so that i can start in on my baroque lace sweater and i'm not dumb i'm going to do the front part first because that's the boring plain part and then i'll do the back part last because fun lace stuff also lace completely charted Mm-hmm. You guys, Dots is not so hot with charts. She has to blow them up real big. Charts are fun. But that was, that was, that was my uh, knitting woes, if you will. Oh, I cut over four, four inches off my hair. I left as much hair on the floor as I have on my head. I am melting to death in this room. <laughs> we'll finish up quick then. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've got some yarn on the go. We do. I'm just going to put it in a jaunty ponytail as we talk. Because jaunty. I already talked about my yarn on the go because I'd gone to the dentist and I waxed poetically about how nice it was to have a dentist who listened. Right. And did the drilling at a lower volume like he didn't do super high. Mm. It took him longer to get it done but it wasn't as loud so I didn't have a, also didn't have a headache when I came out. Which was nice. kind of nice too. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my only yarn on the go was I went to the little brain Little Britain Spring Fiber Fest yesterday. Yes, you ran into the other Jocelyn. Yes, I found myself a replacement Jocelyn. <laughs> hey, she is a freaking fantastic spinner. She is. She. So I also Can I got replace to spin me any day of the week. <laughs> I got to spin on a wheel that was like 150 years old ish. I yesterday. saw that photo. Yeah. Oh my god! Another Jocelyn was helping me, and I oh, almost yes. had it. I had like two little. Oh. Um, the like, oh my gosh i can't remember her. i feel terrible i can't remember her name the lady you bought your spinning wheel from what's her name oh man because it was her wheel i'm the and she's worst. like oh yeah because i was like taking pretty pictures of it and she's like oh do you want to try it i'm like can i'm i play with worst. the antique wheel this like i'm four hundred dollar antique spinning wheel <sighs> and she's like oh yeah here let me get some fiber and blah blah uh-huh, blah blah uh-huh, so like uh-huh so I played with She's that ama- for like oh, I an wish hour. I remembered her name. She's amazing. I'm going to have to apologize when we see her at Blue Hills. I feel like an utter donkey butt. I want to say like Lori, but I don't know if that's right. I feel like a donkey. I'm going to remember in like two hours. And <laughs> I'm just going to exclaim it out loud. And my dad's going to think I've lost my mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how that works, right? Oh, she, well, she refurbishes these wheels. Like she finds them and gives them that yeah. tender loving care. And she, she, I mean, you buy them from her, but... She likes giving them to people who are learning how to spin and helping to lower that uh, cost to jump into spinning, which is amazing because mm-hmm. like, my Ashford traditional, they're $900 American new. Whoa. That's, that's not cheap. Yeah. <laughs> also, not, not like, we're, the, by the time you translate to Canadian, you're talking like, what, 1200 Probably, yeah. Yeah. Guys, I had to spend like 14 on programs. We're working with my computer 
That's not the cost of my computer. That's the cost for one program to help make the computer accessible for me as a visually impaired person. And I don't get any coverage for any of this. So it's a long time for me to save up for some of these bigger pieces of equipment, but like a $200 refurbished one. Yeah. So happy to be able to have that in my life and work with. Also, it's the happiest at, at worsted or DK. I love me some worsted weight yarn. Yeah, the so. one I was spinning on, it wanted to spin like fingering to lace weight lopey, and I was so unprepared for that. <laughs> Did you get you hooked on the idea of getting your own spinning wheel? Oh, your bedroom? absolutely. I after an happen? hour of arguing with this thing, we like reached an agreement, and like I almost was <sighs> spinning properly, and I had so much fun. Yeah, so I just, I'm oh. absolutely getting an old-fashioned yes. spinning wheel. It won't be an antique spinning wheel. I don't think we have to go to the 19th century no. for your spinning wheel. No, <laughs> definitely no. No, it but can I be like we'll, a, a we'll wheel made there. in this century that's like we refurbished, but like a yeah. tre treadle? Oh. Treadle. Treadle? I, yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was oh. a whole extra thing to learn, but I oh. really enjoyed that. So good. I'm just, oh, I'm so happy you enjoyed it because I'm like, yes. This is just, this is a black hole. You can see me owning several, can't you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. This is going to be a problem. I'm going to have multiple e-spinners in a few years. <laughs> yep. The I... trick will be to find an electronic spinner, like an e-spin wheel, an e-wheel, mm -hmm. that I find quiet. Mm. Is mine I... still loud? Because I think it's that was it's... one of the quietest ones available. I hear it but I can't use that as an accurate measurement. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I hear it, but I can still, like, watch TV over it, no problem. Yeah. But I've only really listened to it while you're using it, so I've never been just me spinning on it, so I don't know if I'll find it distracting while I'm spinning. I don't find it real distracting while I'm knitting, but guys, I can knit with screaming five-year-olds running around me. It doesn't bother me. Fair. I can knit with a 95-pound dog trying to be a lap puppy. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't phase. You've seen me at Knit Club. I'll be working on pattern stuff where I have to be counting in my head all the time. I will do that and maintain a conversation and not mess up my knitting. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I can't do that. So I, I don't know. So I need to, um, when you have a couple of bobbins free or a bobbin free for me, I need to take it for a week and just sit down and actually try to spin with it and see if, if it bothers me while I'm focusing on it. All right. I mean, you're talking to me. I spent three months learning how to treadle so it was consistent and smooth. Yeah, I attempted to do that while actually spinning. It was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Don't recommend. Yeah, hard. <laughs> Learn hard. the treadling first. That is Learn a whole other first. skill. Whole other skill set. So and I, and I I'm I need to do that. But I mean, I was practicing my treadling until it became second nature. So I'd be knitting and treadling. <laughs> that was actually recommended to me several times as I was struggling yesterday. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, absolutely. I'm so excited. I'm so glad you had fun with it. I'm so caught. 1800 like 1800 1850 ish so, she didn't so know the exact jealous. date but it was 1850 ish so jealous you got to play with that oh, oh so cool oh, oh so cool red was saying it was a well-attended event you said it was a well-attended event oh yeah that was, was their good. first was year wasn't it second second year yeah that yeah, was off that year yeah i was like it's actually like the first i think was yeah it so it's like a oh. it's like a cozy little space but it was like, it was nicely full, like, comfortably so. Oh, good. And outside was really pretty. It was a sunny day. The wind was a bit cold, but it was oh. a sunny day. We went outside and we took some pictures, so those will be making their way onto Instagram. Excelente. Excelente. I clambered down a riverbank so I could take some cool photos. Because you would. Of course I would. Yeah, yeah. If I'd been there, there would have been the obligatory photo of me standing at the edge with my cane out going, nope. <laughs> I don't do slants anymore. <laughs> uh, this is a bit more than a slant. This was like a <coughs> loose, rocky slope down to a river. Did you practice your skateboarding maneuvers? A little bit, actually. Yeah. Okay. Good. But good. there was like we there was a ledge it. halfway down, which oh, I was we need what to do that for. this summer. Oh, put you on the longboard. We're doing that this summer. We need okay. to put me on the longboard with my cane, and we need to try to get a little action video clip and hope I can make it like a quarter of a city block without face planting. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to find a nice uh, flat space flat. to do that because Osborne Village mm -mm, not great for longboarding. Actually, oh, my house Ooh, they have that yeah. brand new bike path. It That's just got perfect. installed last year. That would Let's be absolutely perfect. 
Okay. Done and done. Decision okay. made. Guys, you're going to see a, a little mini video of me trying to longboard with my stick. <laughs> that gonna should be, be hilarious. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I derailed us again. We're done. We're done with fiber clubs. <laughs> and uh, you're and on the go. Uh, yep. Wool gathering. If I may continue uh, slightly from uh, Little Bird uh -huh. Fiber Fest. Yeah, 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 I bought course. a thing. You bought a thing? I bought a thing Who in this nice are you? burlap sack. Look at this burlap sack. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I bought from Tog and Teal one pound of Falkland Roving. And guess what? Oh. So Tog and Teal are the ones that do the uh, naturally dyed yarns. And you know that how you love, every yeah. that don't have that aren't on the internet? Yes. Um but you know how every time I pick up one of their skeins of yarn I'm like, ooh, what did they dye this one with? And it's copper. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So is it copper? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Listen, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> their naturally dyed copper yarn is freaking stunning we it's all beautiful. pick it up i love we it all every single one of us in the knit club we all pick up that color so this is this is my new roving i have a whole <sighs> pound of copper dyed roving in pound of it a oh pound man of it. yeah it was 25 bucks couldn't say no oh uh if you had said no i would look at you like i didn't know who you were and i don't think we could be friends anymore and and i have this cute burlap sack now <laughs> That may have also been a selling feature because it just looks so adorably <laughs> rustic. Why did Diana buy that? It had a burlap sack. What? Hey, just you know what? <laughs> Red also decided that was a selling feature. So that's totally fair. We have made larger purchases on less criteria. Okay. <laughs> so I'm excited. This is. It's not quite as soft as merino. Um, okay. Which is but fine. It's it by no means it's scratchy. slightly different. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's but slightly it's, different And wool. it's so much sticky. It's so, like, I don't know if you can see this, but it's, like, it is so sticky. Oh, yeah, no, I won't be able to see it till it's, um, I'm there in person, but that's okay. We'll see each other but, soon yeah, enough. Yeah, it's, it's a lot stickier than the merino I spun before. Oh, so, I'm so excited. I'm, that is I'm going to try out a really new, pretty color. new fiber type, and I'm really excited. And there's the so copper. pumped for you. I don't know if I want to spin singles and ply it, or if I want to do the chain plying, or I don't Big know. Big again? Okay. Oh yeah. Or either in either either way, I need to spin singles first, so it doesn't really matter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is going to be amazing. So I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm pumped for you. As I continue working on my shrug again. <laughs> I have a non-yarn thing that I acquired. <gasps> is it the earrings? Yeah, it is the earrings. Oh my so... god! Okay, show up the earrings. <laughs> So Dwarf No Cachette is a ramen restaurant in the French area of Winnipeg, St. Boniface. Yeah, I want to go. It's delicious. They also have I've a cute been. little gift shop. But now, as of, I guess, three days ago, they have a little gift shop in Osborne. Oh, really? Which I found when I was wandering to my hair appointment. I'm like, Dwarf No Cachette? What? But they're in St. Boniface. And what are they doing in Osborne? And they... So it's just a gift shop. Okay. That's fine. But I, I like have... me a gift shop. T-Rex earrings. I just, I'm going to hold up one of these uh, with that. Okay, they're freaking cute. Okay, so it is... Uh, I'm not as into dinosaurs as you are, and I kind of want a pair. <laughs> they're great. They also had uh, Pegasus and elephants and something else. Oh, I would totally get elephants. So this is a T-Rex, where the front half of the T-Rex goes on the front of your ear, and the back half goes on the back of your ear, and it has a little jeweled eye, okay. and... Uh, it's even my birthstone color, I think. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Just for extra fun. It was I, meant to be. I love these so much. So I'm going to clean them and wear them today. I just can't wear them with the fan, headset on. Go oh, no. You're such a dinosaur fan. Yeah. And those are terribly, terribly cute as I blow my nose. Cause Dude, my, the ch my yeah. inner child is absolutely delighted stoked. with these silly things. Stoked. So, so stoked. stoked. I'm out of coffee. Oh, no. Oh, sad. My sad. coffee cup's broken. <laughs> it's empty. This is no good. We'll have to wrap up quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I guess I cold the... brew it. Mm, yeah. Um, oh, the other thing for wool gathering is we've got a couple mm. of logs coming at you for the next couple of weeks because I'm going away. I'm gone Ooh. on Wednesday. By the you time you see this podcast, I will be on my way to Amsterdam. As an administrative note, Diana... Uh huh. Red is helping us out by doing the show notes for you this week. I have documentation. I just need to add a few more things. I have. Dawson has 
no idea what you do. <laughs> I'll go over that with her. I need to finish writing the documentation. I have a crap ton of screenshots and I just need to annotate everything. It's I step okay. by step, like yep. click on this oh thing, my. click on this other thing, click on like this next thing, fill in this value. Close closing instructions for retail? Pretty much. Lock yeah. door. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I've done I know what I do, which I know you have like a vague idea of. Uh, and I know I have a vague idea of what you do, but I don't think we actually know the particulars of what we do. No, I probably no. if I had to do no. your end of things, I would do it entirely differently. Oh yeah, get probably. a similar-ish result. Look, yeah, no, totally. So uh, we will technically be podcast quiet for next week because I'm going to take the week off. Diana's out of the country. Uh, and we're going to toss up some blogs for you guys instead. So if you watch us, you'll have some YouTube notifications when they go up. Uh, and then I come home the weekend after Mother's Day, so May long. Uh, so Red has said she will guest star again. And you guys may have noticed on Instagram we have some non-Diana Jocelyn work popping up. Mm -hmm. That's Red's stuff because we have to showcase some of her stuff. Yep. As soon as I can track down Miss C and get some photos of some of her late stuff, that's also going up in there oh, because... Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It is stunning work, you guys. Um, so we've been doing that, and we're super close friends, so I, I want to be able to, to share some of the stuff that they're working on, too. So me and Reds will sit down, and uh, we will do a recording for you guys. So the weekend after May Long, the podcast will come back. It'll be me and a special guest, and then the week after that, Diana will be back. Mostly because you need a couple of days to recover from Europe time. Yeah, I come back on the 22nd, but then two days later, I'm going on my company's uh, AGM <sighs> retreat. Uh -huh. So I'll be back, like actually back on the 25th, but I will be yes. asleep. You will be done. Trust me. Trust me. I kind of just want to go, hey, internet. Anybody, any listeners in Edmonton want to host me for a weekend so I can go to the Edmonton Fiber for all? <laughs> 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 okay. I was making fun of the cozy up knit ladies. I was like, sure. I'm now eight hours away from you. I mean, you guys go off on a festival <laughs> and you go into BC. Yeah, oh, I see how you like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually only eight hours from Grand Prairie by car right now. Hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, so. No, I'm, I, I am so excited for you to go and have your trip and do your work stuff because you love your job, which is amazing. And I'm really happy that you do, so. I love, and then, I love the people that I work for and with. They're really great. I get to see how many finished things I can get done while you're not looking, and see how many I can pile on top of your head. Uh, probably quite a large stack, I'm anticipating. Always a delight for me to go, okay, put this on and put this on, and the hope, the hope is several things. Because <laughs> A, I want them off my needles. <laughs> and B, it's so fun to can... pile things on my head. I love piling stuff on your head. And I don't do it. You do it. I just pass I know. you a finished object and it just goes on your head. I've never once instigated this. You've done it all on your own. I mean, it seems like oh. the best way to show off a shawl by putting it on my head, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I think so, too. It makes for delightful photos. So, uh, no worries. We haven't gone away. We're just taking our very first official break, which, by the way, we haven't missed a week of recording in over two years. Wow. Our you really managed that? Right? Yep. <laughs> I think I, I was missed because there was another special guest episode with Red at one point. Yes. So I've missed. It one was or the two. week after your wedding. Oh yeah, that was it. That was why. Okay, so <laughs> I've missed, but you we as a podcast have cast not missed. Have not missed. This will be the podcast, the very first break, and it's only for, uh, technically about seven to ten days, depending on when the next video goes up, episode wise. Cool. Yeah, I got a whole week off. I haven't had a week off from the podcast in over two years. Next Sunday, if you get a text, because I don't know what to do with myself. Because we record on Sunday. Well, it'll be evening almost for me by the time you get up, so. But if you have a moment where you're like, am I forgetting to do something? We've forgotten to record. Oh, I anticipate I will have that feeling if I realize it's Sunday. What? I might happen also to you not on Monday? It, I might not realize it's Sunday, honestly. That's fair. That happens when you're text, traveling. You're like, a, what day of the week what? is it? It's Tuesday. Jocelyn, we didn't record. I know. You're taking the week off. It's weird. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not doing show notes? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't have to edit for four hours? What is this week? Where is this crazy? Madness. So it's usually less. It's usually like two hours. So it's just sometimes me and the computer argue. 
which has nothing to do with us and everything to do with the gremlin. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So I'm super excited. I'm excited to see everything you bring back. Stories, photos. I want all the good stuff. Oh, yes. All the good stuff. Yep. Um, otherwise, I think that leaves us with literature and events. Uh, yes, I have oh, boy. a pile of books to list off, even though I'm only reading a couple of them. Well, it's not really a pile, I guess. I have been restraining myself from purchasing books till I get new glasses. So I have my prescription for my bifocals because I get to get bifocals now, guys. Um, and I, I hate, I hate shopping for, I hate shopping for glasses so bad. <laughs> I hate it so much. I hate, I'm so, I'm used to having them on my face. I'm used to them being on my face. Like without them, I feel weird. Mm-hmm. I've, I've had glasses since kindergarten and I am 36. That is decades worth of glasses wearing. So I'm comfortable being a glasses wearer. <sighs> I hate how most of them look on my face. I really, I really do. I have a, I, I have a face shape. It is my face does. shape. Your husband looks cute in his glasses. I do not look cute in any of my glasses. They just fit my face. I mean, he also just kind of looks cute, so. Yeah, you married him. You're, <laughs> that's just, your opinion is biased. I think we can uh, honestly is, yes. say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very Alfred E. Hitchcock is the vibe I got. He got his hair cut yesterday at, like, the hipsterist hair place on Corridon. And so that with the glasses. Would. Of course he would. He looks so Please hipster now. It's it's great. I, I actually really like it. Did you get like a, a Twilight zony kind of vibe? Uh, not really, actually. I just, mm-hmm. I feel like he needs to start wearing scarves now. <laughs> he starts wearing scarves. The amount of fun I will be making of him <laughs> is going to just keep intensifying because I have been friends with him for over a decade now. So almost, almost a decade. Yeah. Like eight or nine years now. I'll just, I'll start putting my shawls on him and he can be more <sighs> like pose with a pipe or something i will buy him a pipe if he would do that oh he has a pipe he can pose oh good we don't have to buy a pipe <sighs> you married a hipster a little bit yeah I'm okay, that's with okay. That. I'm, I'm turning into a hippie i don't know how that happened guys <laughs> oh, anyway, the other books. Day. <gasps> books oh we got derailed again well it's because i started talking about having to go buy glasses and i hate doing it i just ugh. Ah, yeah. I'm not looking forward to it. Yeah, glasses are hard. Well, and the bifocals have to be bigger, and I kind of got used to the smaller frame. Oh, uh, yeah. But I have to nearly double the size of my glasses to put the bifocals. You can have on. the trendy giant hipster glasses. I hate them so much. They looked like crap on me in the 80s. <laughs> Embrace the 80s. <sighs> no, I survived the decade once. I shouldn't have to do it again. Embrace, embrace. <laughs> and I got these chunky plastic frames. I'm like, yeah, I had those when I was 10. Yeah, they're great. on me then, too. I'll just be over here with my chunky plastic purple frames. <laughs> they don't fit my face at all. Yeah, but you've got, you're like your husband. You have a pretty face. Ugh. It's like when you send me photos of the two of you, I'm like, oh, look, you're looking adorable again. Oh, geez, that's a shock. <laughs> know, just post that stuff just on the internet. That's weirdly... where it belongs. <laughs> this whole family makes weirdly adorable children, so, eh. His whole family is photogenic. Yeah. How does an entire family of that many people be photogenic? I don't know. I am not photogenic people. I think I think it's uh, his mom taking a million pictures. Becoming photogenic is sort of a survival mechanism. Yes, they do have the face of mom's got the camera out. Yeah, I, I've developed it now too. <laughs> it's I a have survival a high mechanism. Behind. I was never super included because I was never really mobile. <laughs> So I wasn't with everybody in the group clusters. <laughs> so I don't think there's nearly as many photos of me as there is everybody else. My favorite photo of me and Mr. B when we were dating, I wasn't actually even looking at the camera. Nope, that's the second favorite. My first favorite is the one where we're coming home from one New Year's Eve and we are bundled up. So all you see is this mm. and the snow banks that are higher than us in the background. That's a good photo. That was a good photo. <laughs> It also very aptly described how we do winter, which is outside by foot. Yeah. It was like minus 40 that day. We were walking home at like one in the morning. It was, it was crisp. Yeah. yeah. It was crisp. Ah, but fine. 
Anyway, books. Books. Uh, I I only have two. I'm currently listening to our Kershaw's Chosen, which is the second in the uh, Kershaw series by Jacqueline Carey. It is one of my favorite, longtime favorite books. Uh, I finally got around to posting a review, you guys. Oh my goodness. I posted it and I and I shared the link on Twitter. I never <sighs> share nothing. Who am I? Whoa. Who am I? <laughs> I ask you this. Uh, and I'm re-listening to The Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab because I thoroughly enjoyed that series. So I've had that playing in the background while I work. But Didn't that's you it. Did you just like, listen to that one like a month ago? I, I feel like I wrote really that down good. before. You did. And it was like a month or two months ago. It is that oh, good of a series. Oh, it's that good. Wow. Okay. It's quite good. It's it's going to be on my re-listen for a while because it's. I just really like how the characters play out. So, Otherwise, I've got like 12 books on my to-read pile. I'll get to them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got like a list of 40, so meh. Oh, no, that's just my current. Like, if we were to count like my total TBR, you're in hundreds. Okay. Four. Okay. Yeah. That's just my I'd like to get to this year pile. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I am still very slowly reading Shadow and Claw. It's a big book. It is. It's it's also one of those books that you can reread at least two more times to catch all of the little things that you didn't know to pay attention to the first time. Ooh, nice. So I went to the bookstore and I bought that book. Good. Because I have to take my copy back to the library before I go on my trip. Yeah. But they also had the second book in the series. So, oh, did you get it? Yeah, I did. So yeah, those books right. are coming with me on the trip. Actually, Wonderful. no, probably just the one book. Uh, um, yeah, so I've been still reading Shadow and Claw by Gene Wolfe. It's really good. The second book is called Sword and Citadel. Okay. Uh, and this is the Book of the New Sun series. I think it was originally published as four books, and then they shrunk it down into two books that are very large with very small print. Hey, I found uh, in Kohl's in the Market Mall uh, the Expanse book series. Ah. In trade paper book size. Ah. So if the bifocals work as well as we're hoping they're going to, I can read trade paperback again. Nice. So I could actually read that series in a real book rather than having to do it digitally or audibly. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah. That actually makes yeah. a great segue because the other book that I've been reading this week <laughs> is the fifth book in the Expanse series. Listen, you and your husband have been trying to get me to watch this TV series. It's really good. For a while. And I'm like, I should read the books first because I'm quite... For the most part, I'm really read the books first. Yeah, okay. It's sort of my my personal general hard rule about things. Um, so I've been putting it off because <laughs> I haven't read the books yet. Fair. But I really, I really feel like the feel of a book when I can get it. Yeah. And the eyeball thing has been nebulous for years. You know this. So hopefully, maybe it'd be nice to be able to pick up a paper book again and do some reading if I can. The Expanse series by oh, I know. James S.A. Corey. Corey, yeah. Yeah, I'm, it looks like an amazing series. I really would like to read it. It's like space opera. That's Politics, my... and there's science, and there's it's, really it's an good epic, characters. And... It's epic high fantasy, only science fiction. And yeah. I like me a good epic high fantasy, so yeah. should be fine. Yeah. And so. oh, there's it has all of the things that I can't say because to say any of it would be spoilery. <laughs> it's like Old Man's War from John Scalzi. You want to tell people, but if you tell people more than what's on the back cover, it spoils, spoils the whole reveal. Yeah. Having said that, read Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Yes. I'm going to write that down. Because, you guys, that was an amazingly fun space romp. Yes. I enjoyed that, was, that thoroughly. Oh. I enjoyed most of the series for it quite good. It it the series are hard. I'm not finished all of it, but series series are hard. But I mean, I listened to the Dispatcher by John Scalzi, mm -hmm. which is a novella. I'm making you link all the things, um, and I super recommend that as a as just a short little novella to listen to while you're doing stuff. <clears throat> so good, so good. It's like six hours, seven hours, or something like. It's a short book, uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Excellent. Yeah, I like Scalzi's stuff. It plays around, he plays around a lot with uh, perceptions and, you know, what would you do if? Yeah. Like, what do you do as a society if people don't die? Interesting. Like, if you don't have a natural death because you've grown old, 
you just wake up in your bed in your home. So there's no such thing as murder anymore, because you can't technically murder anybody. Because the moment you do, they just wake up at home in their own bed. But, but how, do, how does society evolve and adapt to that? That's the dispatcher. Oh, I love what? that kind of stuff. What? Just plays with your mind. Uh, oh, so good. Love that stuff. Uh, so good. Okay. Mind you, again, I also read things like unmentionable. <laughs> Which, please, please listen to that when you come home. <laughs> I do want to. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I think I added it to the work book club list because oh, it sounds so, so good. Oh, it is, there is, it is such a good book club book because there is so much in there to just to discuss. Even if half of your discussion is the whole group going face palm. <laughs> that sounds great. Just, just comparing what we know now to what we knew then. Just hajiba. And you'll never look at pineapples the same way. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Oh, uh, that's my life, folks. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. I could go on about books for hours. Did you have more on your list? Uh, no, that is it. Cool beans. All right. That just brings us to events, which Ta-da! is shorter now that I've been to one of the events. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we are currently running a craft along, which we have discussed earlier. It is the spring garment craft along. The rules are pretty simple. Is it adult sized item? Cool. You're in. Uh- <laughs> yep. I'm going to sew a skirt eventually. Point? Imaginary bonus points if it's in cotton, because I'm a massive cotton fan, and I love a nice cotton or linen or bamboo for the summer, because I get, oh, guys, I put my hair in a ponytail. It's only seven degrees outside for the high today, and I'm warm sitting here in a cardigan and capris. Crazy person. Don't know how you do it. (sighs) Teach me your Uh, secret heated ways. Oh, God, if I could give you, if I could be cooler and give people some of my heat, I would do that in a heartbeat. It's heartbeat. not cold in here right now, and I have giant <sighs> socks on. My feet are still cold. Uh, I'm quite warm. So, that's going on. Diana's sewing something. I'm knitting something. I may honestly crochet something, knit something, and sew something. Just because once I get home, I get back to my normal level of busy. And I want to uh, modify the dress I made for your wedding. Mm. I want to uh, bring it in, because I made it for my size, but I forgot about the under again. <laughs> I don't think I'm anime styled, so I don't. <laughs> I assume the rest of me is as large as my girls. I'm no longer that way. I've lost a fair bit of weight in the last couple of years. So I need to bring it in an elastic under the girls. Mm. And I want to shorten it a little bit because the T length is nice, but I find it a bit of a nuisance. So I want to bring it up so it's closer to knee length. Okay. Rather than the T length. So that's just some small modifications on my part. So I'm going to do that, and I want to shorten, thin the straps out a little bit, because I find the straps just a smidge too thick. So I'm going to literally take the dress apart to put it back together again to shorten it. Because right. I do things like that, because I'm crazy. Uh-huh. So I'm going to do that, because then it'll look amazing with my cardigan, or my shrug again. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that winter on my mind shawl, which is sitting in the background, all skeined up, ready to go. Nice. The other reason I want to have the, the shawl I'm currently working on off my needles because I want an excuse to start that one. Guys, I bought Chowgu lace needles for them, for that shawl. I gotta get going. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other, anything else we've got going on? Not super. Uh, as of the 24th of May, I'm going to be participating in Stash Dash, which is hosted by the Knit Girls. Uh, they are two wonderful podcasters. They've been doing it for over eight years. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I can't even contemplate that. Uh, every year while Laura is on her summer holidays because she is a librarian at a school, which is super cool. She runs a stash dash. The idea being you challenge yourself to knit a kilometer amount. You get to choose the kilometer amount of projects. It's to sort of help either use up your stash, get works and progresses off your needle, sort of to inspire you to dive into your current collections or the collection you bought just because you wanted to cast something off. I think they had the, they have this week or next week, everything's going up for review because every year the community votes on slight rule modifications. Mm -hmm. And then they do an official video with all the rules as per this year. So once that's up, me and Diana will link it. Yep. And by me, I mean Diana. 
I do it all the time. I, I say we and I mean me most of the time. I'll do that and I'm going to participate because I love the challenge. Like, just how much can I knit in the, in the summer months? I find it really inspiring. And it's not a challenge against somebody else. It's just myself. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you did 3K last year. I you're did. Gonna do three, you're going to do 3K this year? Or do you want to stretch it and see if you can do, like, 5K? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So, I'll have to take stock when I get back of the status also, of all of my things. Also remember that spinning now counts. So Truth. the first time you spin a single all of that yardage counts, and then you get to count it again when you ply it. Well, if spinning counts. Uh-huh. Actually, I don't uh-huh. have any way of counting how long that is. Wait. Because oh, okay. once you weigh it out, like if you weigh out your single, oh. and then you weigh out your, and, and that tells you a rough approximation. That's how they do yardages and meterages. It's that approximation makes a lot of by sense. weight. Yeah. Measure out a meter and weigh it. Or you measure out the skein. And you know roughly what size you are. If you've got a fingering weight and you've got about 100 grams, you usually average anywhere from 400 to 450 yards. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's math. How did I have so many math-driven hobbies? It's math. Like, it's useful. I graduated high school mathematics with 51% at the consumer level. Every single one of my hobbies involves a lot of math. How did that happen? Because math is great. Just no, not the way no. they teach it in school. <sighs> Listen, I can do my own taxes, I can budget, and I can keep a household. I am the perfect wife, except I can't have kids. Meh. Eh, I can adopt if it's necessary. Adoption's a really, really beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And there's always fur babies, of course. Uh, I have one. <laughs> one is plenty. <laughs> one, one quadrupedic monster is good, because I have to go on the list for service talks. <laughs> That would be great. We could have two monsters. I could have two monsters. <sighs> uh, uh, what else? Oh, June uh, mm-hmm. is the Blue Hills Fiber Festival in Brandon. We'll be out there mm-hmm. on June the 8th. Doing yeah, you guys. guys. Meet We're going to do a podcaster. Yeah. We're going to do a podcaster meetup. Uh, this will be our first podcaster meetup. So this will be exciting to see if anybody shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear my t-shirt so that I look kind of official. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Weird. Oh my gosh. I'm going to try to get some swag ordered for people who come find us during the podcast or meet up. They can get some swag. Yeah. I think that'll be a good idea. So we'll have some, some stuff in that. So if I can get it order, get some stuff ordered in, I might see if we can bring totes to sell with our podcast logo on them. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. See if we can do that. Cause well, you've seen my, like, I love the tote we pre-ordered. Mm-hmm. Try it out. I think those are the totes we should go with. Agreed. So, that's great. We're talking with the ladies about time frames and space requirements right now. And by we, I mean me. Yes, Jocelyn is organizing this, is, this entire thing. This is Jocelyn's purview. This is the stuff that I do for the podcast. So, if you guys want to come down to see us in Brandon, it's during the summer fair. And we're going to be in the barn on the summer fair grounds with the Blue Hill Fiber Festival. So, super stoked to go. Uh, also means we're in Brandon. Uh, which means we'll have to stop by and say hi to my grandparents, because my grandparents mm-hmm. live in Brandon, which, you know, I don't think any of the girls mind. I don't think so. <sighs> no. Going to have tea with my grandparents? Oh, it's terrible. Uh, we'll have to Such a sit hardship. and knit and chat, chat and drink tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whatever oh. will we do with ourselves? <laughs> It'll be terrible. <laughs> It'll be awful, you guys. So... I'm, uh, we'll work on times and get everything figured out. So once I have like official times and stuff, I will absolutely make sure everybody knows. We will spam the internet if we have to. So spam, I'm spam, hoping spam, 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 I'm hoping spam. we get to meet people and get to see their projects in person. Yeah. Yeah, I want to touch people's yarn and give hugs and say hi and meet people. So I'm Awkwardly ask if off. I can pet their shawl that they're currently wearing. I it's, definitely it's did not that yesterday. For me. <laughs> I, don't, I feel no awkwardness about it. I don't even think about it. I just go, oh my god, that's gorgeous. Can I feel you up? Like, <laughs> and no shame, guys. I'm a hugger. No shame. No shame. Uh, it just feels weird from the outside. Like In regular everyday life, how often do you walk up to someone and go, can I pet you? <laughs> but when you're surrounded by knitters, it's totally fine because that's normal. I'm and not I just... sure I should answer that question, should I? I just, I just like the yeah, difference yeah. oh yeah yeah 
but to understand my mother will tell random strange men she likes their backsides in grocery stores or oh point out if they're taller than me and go he's taller than you as though that is an indication that I should hit on him because I should date men who are taller than me I don't actually care that much about the height <laughs> it's not really my top concern your mother is an interesting character my mom gives no farts and her life is so stress free because she is who she is and deal with it it's really kind of cool to to which to aspire towards. It's just like, here I am. If you don't like me, cool, move on. I don't care. <laughs> uh, it helps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think other than Stash Dash, we have for sure we're going to the Manitoba Fiber Festival in September. Yep. Is it September? Yes. Yes. September. Uh, other than that, we're sort of nebulous about the plans. Uh, I may try to see if I can get out to Nip City this fall. I might make it. I might not. <laughs> Diana has definitely used up all of her vacation this year. Oh, yeah. And believe it or not, I'm planning stuff for 2019 already because I know better. You mean 2020? It's already 2019. Sorry, 2020. You're correct. We're in 2019 now. Yep. Oh, man. Catch up. <laughs> <sighs> Going so fast, I don't even know what year it is. Uh, so I'm, I'm sort of lining up and looking at things for that for me and Diana to go do because... I make the plans, and Diana goes, cool. Pretty much, yeah. It works for us. If it's, aside from trips, I hate planning stuff. I hate planning (laughs) events. If it's a trip, I'm super on board. Yeah. Well, I think what we need to do is, when you get home, uh, discuss for sure which ones we'd actually like to try to actively get to this next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, make arrangements, because if we want to do something big like uh, Rhineback, I'm going to have to book it during Ryan back this year to get us a space good point yeah so i will pest you over the summer and we'll make some finalized decisions for next year so i can i can do the long-term advance planning that's never any fun fair unless you're weird and ocd like me (laughs) it's a trip so i i kind of understand yeah yeah and then we can do go from there so we'll make some things up and whatever other tiny small fiber festivals that happen in manitoba that or uh, close to us on the other side of border in Ontario, because Diana has a car. Vroom! That we could theoretically do during a weekend, and we'll see what we can sling. Yeah. Ta-da! Obviously, I will find more knit-alongs. Always. Don't worry. Always, guys. Those will pop in as it is. But uh, as of now, that's it for events. Excellent. Isn't that wonderful? <sighs> well, I think just wait get closer to Christmas, and it's just stockpiled. <laughs> Uh, but that's it, I think, for the week. That's everything. Yeah, it's time for me to go make some pancakes. Okay. Well, I have to go get ready to go to the berry barn. Yeah, it's Sunday. I've got to make pancakes. Uh, Saskatoon berry crumble. Hello. Ooh, but Hello. Pancakes. Mom made stew last night. Oh, it was so good. Mm, stew. Oh, so good. All right. So, until not next week, but the week after, I'll say I'm Jocelyn. <laughs> And I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't don't forget forget to knit. It was on. It was perfect. Really? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. It sounds so bad on my end. (laughs) No, it's good on this end. We're good. Okay, good. Perfect.